The time, 9 o'clock. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you My Sister Eileen, starring Rosalind Russell on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our version of one of America's most popular recent entertainments, My Sister Eileen. Appearing originally in short story form as written by Miss Ruth McKenney, this delightful comedy attracted wide notice and was presently turned into a highly successful stage play by Joseph Fields and Jerome Chodorov, from which it was made into an equally successful motion picture. And now on our Hallmark Playhouse, we offer it for radio with the conviction that our listeners will enjoy it just as much. Its fun and its wit against the background of modern New York have the real tang of the big city. And no one is better qualified to exploit this to the full than our star of tonight, one of Hollywood's most notable comedians, Miss Rosalind Russell. And now a word about Hallmark cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of My Sister Eileen. How often you've said it's the little things that count. Those who make Hallmark cards think so, too. For Hallmark cards translate the little happenings of living into precious memories. There's a Hallmark card with just the right words to commemorate a new job, a new house, a new baby, birthdays and anniversaries, as well as words of cheer when kindly understanding means so much. And every time you send a Hallmark card, that one and only Hallmark on the back says, you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting my sister Eileen, starring Rosalind Russell. My sister Eileen and I arrived in New York on one of those days in August when you can fry an egg on the sidewalk. All day we walked the streets hunting for an apartment, while our spirits sank lower with the sun. By evening, we were fair game for Mr. Apopoulos when we staggered into a cellar apartment in Greenwich Village. Let me tell you, my dear young ladies, this is the best value for your money you can get in New York. Look around. Look around. Note the exquisite imitation fireplace, the magnificent bookshelves, the exciting dormer window. Uh, yes, well, it's uh, very nice. Uh, only we're not sure this is quite <laughs> what we're looking for. My dear young woman, life passes up and down in front of that window like a regular parade. <laughs> what more could a young person with a typewriter want? <laughs> Am I wrong in presuming that you are author? Uh, uh, haven't you something higher up? Higher up? You don't want to be climbing stairs all day in this heat, do you? Oh, I don't think this apartment's so bad, Ruth. Eileen, do you mean you, you like this place? Look at it, one window on a level with the sidewalk. Look at the walls, all splotched and damp. On a day and... like this, anything is liable to perspire. <laughs> <laughs> there is one piece of furniture here in this room that goes with any other piece. For Just... $45 a month, what do you expect? $45 a month for this? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Acropolis. Uh, Acropolis. Uh, it, it, it's very nice, but we'd uh, like to think it over for a day or two. Come on, Eileen. Oh, Ruth, I'm so tired. Couldn't we stay here for a few days, and then if we like it... I'll do better than that. You can have the place for a month, on trial, at absolutely no cost to you. Oh, well, we, we couldn't let you do a thing like that. Could we, Eileen? Well... And then, if you're not 100% satisfied, I give you back your first month's rent. Oh, that sounds... <laughs> That sounds awfully fair to me, Ruth. Well, I don't know. We should... Good, it's all settled. What? Let me show you where everything is. Huh? You won't find a finer suite anywhere. Behind these curtains is a modern kitchenette, complete in every detail. Well, wait Attention, a minute. This is a luxurious bathroom. Uh, but now, wait a minute. They're, they're awfully small. Small? Small? <laughs> That's strange talk from a creative artist. What does an author need except four walls and a typewriter? Down here, just a tank of oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I like a girl with a sense of humor. <laughs> I tell you why I take such a personal interest in you two girls. Do you see that landscape on the wall? Hmm? That's from my blue-green period. You mean you painted that? Years ago. Now you understand why I reach out a sympathetic hand to you beginners, huh? Do you write too, young lady? No, no, I'm an actress. Well, you certainly got the looks for it. <laughs> well, now I'll send over for your bags, and that will be $45 even. Now, look, <clears throat> Eileen... Look at this neighborhood. It doesn't well, look I don't nice. see what we can lose, Ruth. What? Mr. Apopoulos said he'd refund our money if it doesn't turn out right. That's right. Legally, you got me where you want me. I gave my word in front of a witness. Oh, please, Ruth, I can't stand anymore. I've got to get to bed. Oh, well, it's still against my better judgment. But uh, here you are, Mr. Acropolis. Apopoulos, <laughs> thank you. That's a $20. Uh, uh, now, remember what you said. That after you... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 what was that? Ruth. What was what? That noise. The whole room shook. <laughs> that just goes to show you how you're going to get used to it. I didn't even notice it. <laughs> get used to it? You mean it happens all the time? Oh, you won't even be conscious of it. A little blasting. The new subway. You mean to say they're blasting right underneath us? Well, what are you worrying about? Those engineers know how much dynamite to use. Oh. <laughs> but, but it does it go on all the time? No, no, no. They knock off at midnight. They don't start again till six in the morning. <laughs> six in the morning? Oh, Ruth, we can't live here. You can't do this to us. Now, give me my money. Give me I my money back. I said I give you your money back, and I will. If at the end of the month, you are still dissatisfied. Good night, ladies. Sleep tight. Oh. oh, Ruth, I'm so sorry. I'm the one that got you into this. Oh, well, let's get ready for bed. Do you realize we've got exactly $49.71 until one of us gets a job? Remember what that boy on the bus told us? You're not eligible for relief until you've lived here for three years. Mm. And while we're on the bright side, we can't get unemployment insurance until we've had a job and been fired. Oh. Ruth, maybe we shouldn't have come to New York just yet. Maybe we should have stayed in Columbus a little longer. Mm. Here are your pajamas. Thanks. I wonder what Billy Hunnaker's doing now. Well, that's the advantage of not leaving any men behind. I don't have to worry what becomes of them. <laughs> different with you. Boys never meant anything in your life. Not after they got a load of you, they didn't. Oh, well, turn out the light. Let's get to bed. Oh, I hope some fresh air gropes its way in here. The light doesn't go off. Hmm? Try it again. Oh, oh, I see what it is. There's a lamppost right in front of the window. Oh, oh pull down the shade. Oh, all right. Eileen, there isn't any shade. Just turn your back on it and try to go to sleep. Oh, Ruth, what are we going to do? We're going to do 30 days. That was our first night. It was quite a night. People walked by, looked down at us while we were trying to sleep, spoke to us, and kids went by banging sticks on the bars of our window. Cops went by. In fact, quite as Mr. Apopoulos had promised us, life went by our window. The next day, we started out to take New York by storm. Eileen went from theatrical office to theatrical office, sat in waiting rooms, and explained about the shows she was in in uh, Columbus. I walked from newspaper office to newspaper office, telling anyone that would listen that I had been the society editor of a Columbus newspaper. Everyone was polite enough. For no one was passing out any jobs that month. I got pretty bored with it all after a couple of weeks, but not Eileen. I met a man today, Ruth. I think I would have known that anyway. <laughs> He's a reporter, and I told him all about you. He seemed very interested. Yeah. I'll bet he was so interested he couldn't wait to get you alone. Now, let's eat dinner and get it over with. I want to take a cold shower and crawl into bed. Oh, you can't go to bed yet, Ruth. I invited a man to dinner. A man? Now, for who, for heaven's sake? Frank Lippincott. Lippincott? Uh, who is Frank Lippincott? Oh, didn't I tell you about that boy who manages the Liggett's Drugstore on 44th Street? Ah, oh, that one. You know, I've been in New York just as long as you have. 
And the only man I've met said, why don't you look where you're going? <laughs> Frank hasn't let me pay a lunch check since I've been going in there. I have a feeling that before long, the 44th Street branch of Liggett's is going to be under new management. Oh, uh, come in. Hiya, girls. I'm direct from upstairs. Huh? Oh, what? Huh. The what? I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech and a heck of an engineer. You get it? Oh, oh that's real cute. Uh, my wife and I have a sort of a problem, and we wondered if you'd be willing to help us out. Well, of course we will. Wait a minute. In what way? Well, it's like this. The Columbia Broadcasting people are sending for Helen's old lady. They're paying all expenses to go on a show with, for where they send for screwballs from all over the country. Yeah? She builds things out of matchsticks. You know, houses and things. Anyway, she's moving in with Helen while she's here, which kind of pushes me right into the alley. Oh. You see, her mother doesn't know we're married, and we don't want her to know until I have a job. So we were wondering if I brought down a cot, if you'd let me sleep in your kitchen. Well, well now, wait a minute. I don't know if we could... Oh, we could do it for one night, Ruth. Gee, thanks, kid. Don't mention it, kid. <laughs> I'll get my stuff together right away. I'll never forget this. Eileen, now, why did you go and say a thing like oh, that? Oh, that must be Frank. You let him in while I comb my hair. All right. Hello. You're Mr. Lippincott, aren't you? Yes, I am. Uh, sit down, Mr. Lippincott. Dear sister's just freshening up a bit. Uh, she'll be out in a minute. Oh, Ruth. Yes, sister. What is it, dear? I'll be out in a minute. You see, I wasn't lying. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Eileen's uh, been telling me about your drugstore. I understand you have awfully good food. Oh, it's the best. And very reasonable. Reasonable isn't the word, as I understand it. <laughs> oh, now who... Oh, well, what can I lose? Yes? Hi, I'm looking for a party named Sherwood, Eleanor Sherwood. You mean Eileen? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess it is Eileen, come to think of it. Oh, well, I'm Ruth Sherwood, Eileen's sister. Come in. Oh, uh, Clark's my name, Chick Clark. Mm. Oh, Eileen, uh, Mr. Clark is here. Mr. Who? <laughs> uh, Ruth, this is the newspaper gentleman who was so interested in you. Hello, Eileen. Uh, hello, Frank. Why didn't you let me know you were coming, Mr. Clark? Well, I was just in the neighborhood, Eleanor, and I thought I'd drop by. I've uh, been thinking about you all afternoon, gorgeous. Oh, well, well, well thank you. That's very complimentary, but, but I'm busy right oh, now. Oh, go right ahead with whatever you were going to do. Don't mind me. I'll just make myself comfortable. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Lippincott here is with Liggett's. A great store. I buy all my clothes there. <laughs> it's a drug store. Oh, oh, my mistake. Oh, Ruth, do something. Um, we, uh, we were just going to eat, Mr. Clark. We, uh, I'm afraid we don't have enough to ask you to join well, us. Well, that's but... all right. It's too hot to eat anyhow. Go right ahead. <laughs> yes, well, all right. Uh, now, here, Frank, uh, do you want to help me dish up the spaghetti? Oh, sure. Uh, oh, just hold this plate here, and I'll serve it right from the stove. Oh, oh, no! oh, 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 Frank, you spilled the spaghetti all over your white suit. Oh, what happened? Oh, Ruth, I can't stand this anymore. We've got to do something about it. What can we do about it? Some little place you've got here. Oh, Frank, let me try to sponge off your suit. Oh, I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. Hi, everybody. Don't mind me. I just want to put up my cot now. Oh, oh, uh, uh, this is the wreck. This is Mr. Clark and Mr. Lippincott. Uh, I hope you don't mind if I put this up in the corner someplace and go to sleep now. I'm big. Eileen! Well, for a place with a bad location and no neon sign, we're doing one heck of a business. <laughs> How is everybody tonight? I'm happy to see that my young ladies have so many nice friends. Oh. See, I told you you're going to be happy here. Happy here? Oh, oh, well, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home.
just a moment, we'll return to the second act of My Sister Eileen, starring Rosalind Russell. Samuel Taylor Coleridge, the great English poet, said, What comes from the heart goes to the heart. And you know, when you send a Hallmark card, whatever the occasion, you can be sure your message will speak directly to the heart of that friend or dear one you've remembered. You see, the makers of Hallmark cards understand the importance of words in a greeting card. They know that there are times when the things you feel in your heart are difficult to say to others. That's why those who make Hallmark using words to express your warm congratulations on happy occasions such as birthdays, anniversaries, or a heart-to-heart message of encouragement in time of illness or grief, your friendly good wishes on special holidays, or just any day. Yes, to say what you want to say the way you want to say it. You'll always find Hallmark cards that mirror your own good taste. That's why if you ask your friends what name they think of in greeting cards when they want to send the very best, they'll quickly answer Hallmark cards. And that's why it's easy to remember it would be difficult to forget to look for the Hallmark on the back of every card you choose when you care enough to send the very best. And now here is the second act of My Sister Eileen starring Rosalind Russell. get that first month in New York while Eileen collected bows, I collected rejection slips. Gradually it began to dawn on us that the New York theaters and the New York newspapers had been spinning along without our talents for some time, and probably would go on that way. The temperature went steadily up and our hopes dwindled with our finances. The wreck would arrive each evening with his cot, disappear into the kitchen, and leave in the morning. The subway came closer and closer, and so did the end of the month. Then one day, the phone rang. Sherwood residence? You want Miss Ruth Sherwood? For me? Uh, Who's calling, please? What? What? Oh, yes, yes, she's here. Ruth, it's Chick Clark's paper. Mr. Baines of the city room wants to talk to you. Hello? Yes? This is she, her, she. (laughs) Walt? Yes, Mr. Baines. Yes, Mr. Baines. Oh, thank you, Mr. Baines. That's wonderful. Yes, yes, of course. I have a pencil. What is it? Sand Street, Brooklyn. Yes, I've got it written down. Sure, 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 I understand. Yes, right away, Mr. Baines. Bye. Oh, what did he say? What did he want? He's giving me a chance to show what I can do. An assignment over in Brooklyn. Brooklyn? What happened there? A Brazilian training ship just came in, like Annapolis. Only these fellows are all young coffee millionaires. I'm going to do one of those human interest stories about it. Well, Chick was some good after all. Yeah, I guess I owe Mr. Clark an apology. I always thought he was just trying to get around you. I still think so. Well, (laughs) i got to get on my way. Now, pray for me. I've got to get this job. I've just got to get this job. (sighs) Gee... Chick! Hi, beautiful. Oh, Chick, what are you doing here? Oh, I thought you might be lonesome with Ruth being away all afternoon. Oh, oh, no, no. As a matter of fact, I was just leaving myself. Oh, now, wait a minute. You can't walk out on me after I went and fixed it to get you alone without that eagle-eyed sister of yours around. Chick, that call Ruth got was from the editor, wasn't it? Oh, now, look, honey, it's going to work out the same way. I'm going to hand the story to the city desk as a sample of what she can do. You sent Ruth over to Brooklyn on a wild goose chase? Wild goose nothing. I'm letting her cover my assignment. What kind of a heel do you think I am? Oh. You get out of here. Oh, now, wait a you minute. You get out of here. I'll, I'll call your city editor and tell him everything, how you used his name on the phone Okay, and how... okay, you win. A fine little sneak you turned out to be. I look forward to the day when the Bronx Express runs right through this room. So long. I came back from Brooklyn four hours later, followed by six young naval officers that couldn't speak English. They followed me in the subway uptown to the newspaper office where I turned in my story. Downtown, right into the apartment. I was desperate. Oh, oh, senorita, it's oh, what in the world? Oh, you goodbye. Au revoir. Ah, we just say. Ah, Gordon, no puedo fugir. No, no puedo fugir. Me toda esta. What's going on? You can see for yourself. The fleet's in. How do you say get the hell? 
back out of here in Portuguese. Oh, my. Uh, now, see here. You get right out of here. Oh, 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 what did you bring them here for? Bring them? They've been right behind me ever since I left the Brooklyn Navy Yard. There was another dozen when we started out, but they got lost in the subway. <laughs> Go! Go away, boys! Please! Uh, no! Tell them to get away from me! Oh, no, you tell them. <laughs> Stop grinning at me, you, you big dope! Musica! Musica! Oh, oh, they're turning on the phonograph. Oh, just make yourself at home, boys. Let's go, guys! Let's go, guys! Hey, get out of this! I can't even dance the rumba! Stop that! Bruce! Bruce, make him let go of me! He just wants to dance the laconga! Oh, now isn't that cute? They're making a long conga line. Eileen, Eileen, listen, I've got an idea. Lay them out the back door and run like the dickens for the front door and I'll let you slip in. Go on. Well, all right, I'll do it. I can break this one's hold. Seated. Well, let me here. I'll be here. Oh, oh, do I get into this mood? Oh, Eileen, Eileen, listen, going by the window. Who are all those men? Oh, no, 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 that's nothing at all. Uh, they're just some friends uh, from Brazil. Mm. They just happen to... Well, watch out, Father. I gotta get her. She's gonna be here in a minute. Now, here she comes. Bye, 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 It's a good thing I was on the girls' track team. That's all right. Father! Girls, sit down. I want to have a talk with both of you. How much money have you got left? Well, I covered a story today for a newspaper. I wrote it and turned it in before I came home. It might mean a job. Oh, Ruth. Ruth, I have to tell you about that. I don't think New York is any place for two girls like you alone. Oh, we've been all right, Dad. Oh, of course we have. Hiya, girls. Oh. Helen's mother's gone home, and I'm moving back up there again. Thanks a lot for letting me bunk in here with you these past two weeks. Oh. <laughs> I'll be down to get my things later. All right, girls, get your things together. I'm not asking you any questions, but I'm taking you home on the bus tonight. I'm going down and pick up the bus tickets, and when I get back, I want you to be ready to leave. Okay, Father. Okay. Oh, gee, if we go back to Columbus, what will people say? Did you hear about the Sherwood girls? On account of them, we almost lost a naval base in Brazil. <laughs> oh, Eileen, I can't go back. Not now. Not when I'm just beginning to find out something about myself. Find out? What? Well, for one thing, I think differently. I feel differently. I, I feel stronger somehow, as though I really know myself for the first time. That's why I hate to go back. I may never feel this way again. Hello, kids. The chick gawk, you get out of here, you big snake. Well, now, wait a minute, Eleanor. Give me a chance. What's the matter, Eileen? Ruth, when I tell you what this heel is... Wait a minute, will you? Ruth, the city editor read your Brazilian story and he thinks it's the absolute nuts. He does? Don't believe him, Ruth. He's the worst liar oh, I... So help me. May I be struck dead on the spot if it isn't the truth. <laughs> oh, for a minute I thought you... There. <laughs> Yeah, now, look, get wise to yourselves, will you? I'm telling the truth. Hello? Who? Mr. Baines? Yeah, that's him, the city editor. Yes, Mr. Baines. Oh, thanks so much, Mr. Baines. Oh, that's wonderful. What? Yes, Mr. Baines. Yes, I'll be there. Bye, Mr. Baines. I've got a job. I start Monday morning. Oh, you see, that's yeah. what I've been trying to tell you. Uh, I'll see you there. So long, Eleanor. Oh, so, so long, Chick. Eileen, do you realize? I've got a job. We can stay. Oh, felicitations, my dear young ladies. Did I just hear you say you got a job? Oh, uh, hello, Rasputin. <laughs> Ruth's starting on the paper Monday. Well, isn't that fine news? I got a piece of good news today, too. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I just got a letter from the city today. The blasting is over. <laughs> Here's the letter. <laughs> and now I intend to make each of these studios a haven of beauty and repose. New furniture, new paint, A1 stoves, reduced rent. Reduced rent? How much reduced? This place will be given away for $30 on a lease. 
$30. And you're really going to do all those things? Uh, I just happen to have a lease with me and a fountain pen. <laughs> you see what it says there in print? Mm. New beds, walls painted, Venetians blind. Venetians it certainly says it all right. What do you think, Eileen? Maybe this place is lucky. Of course it is. Well, he, he can't back out of the improvements, can he? Nope, nope. Have we really got him where we want him? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm trapped. <laughs> well, all right. We'll sign. Oh, congratulations. You sure made a wise decision. <laughs> Aren't you getting ready, girls? The bus leaves in 40 minutes. We're not going, Dad. What? Isn't it wonderful? Ruth sold a story and she's got a job on a newspaper. Uh, you are the father? Congratulations. You sure got to pay a brilliant daughter. Oh, wait a minute. It's all settled, Dad. We've just signed a six-month lease. A six-month lease? <laughs> Goodbye. I gotta go now. Goodbye. Mr. Acropolis? Acropolis. Acropolis, Acropolis. Would you mind telling me what that noise was? You said they were through blasting. They are through blasting. They just started to drill. Well, goodbye, girls. Glad you're going to be with us. Oh. you come in. I'm Ruth Sherwood, and this is my father, and this is my sister, Eileen. Russell and James Hilton will return in a moment. Have you been thinking about vacations these days? We have at our house. And while we planned ahead, my wife and I have been thinking, too, about our last year's vacation. How many wonderful new friends we made. The good times we all had together. And how glad we are that we kept together all year long in such a pleasant way. With Hallmark cards. Yes, you can tell your friends you are thinking of them. Whether they live a continent away or in your very own building, this easy Hallmark way. For instance, did you know you can send a Hallmark card that says, Sorry, I haven't written. A card with a message so amusing you're just bound to be forgiven by that friend you may have neglected. There are Hallmark cards just to say hello, or to bring a warm message to a very special someone. And whether your cards carry your thoughts across the miles or merely across the way, your Hallmark cards say what you want to say, the way you want to say it. So why not let your friends know they are on your mind and they haven't been forgotten? You'll see how many ways you can show them you'll remember when you make your selection at the store where you buy your Hallmark cards. And that Hallmark on the back carries a special message, too. It says you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Russell and Russell, for your delightful portrayal of Ruth Sherwood. And I'd like to thank Barbara Isla for her splendid performance as Eileen. I've always loved the story of these two girls, Mr. Hilton, with their ups and downs in the big city, I so thoroughly enjoyed the same role in the motion picture, you know. A case of perfect casting. Oh, how nice of you to say so, Mr. Hilton. And I want to say that when it comes to thoughtfulness, Hallmark cards fit the role perfectly, too. Now, Mr. Hilton, what... Have... Now, Mr. Hilton, what have you selected for next week? Next Thursday evening, Hallmark Playhouse will present a big-hearted, action-packed story of the apple country in Washington State at the close of the 19th century. This story is They Came to a River by Alice McKay, and we shall star in it Jean Crane. And I assure you it'll be good listening. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director producer is Bill Gay. Our music was conducted by Lynn Murray, and our script tonight was adapted by Jean Holloway. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Rosalind Russell may currently be seen appearing with Ray Milland in the Columbia picture comedy A Woman of Distinction. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Alice McKay as They Came to a River, starring Jean Crane. And in the weeks to come, Teresa Wright in Sanford Salyers, Marmee, the mother of little women. And after that, Dan Wickenden's The Wayfarer on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is 
KNBC, Kansas City, Missouri. Stay tuned for...